Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Ember's here. Happy Saturday. Hope everyone's doing well. We're going to continue on for our second playthrough of Replicant. And uh, we'll take it from there. All right. Hope you're all doing good. Let's have some fun. Kaine, are you all right? Kaine! I fear there is little we can do for her. No! Kaine! What is happening? <laughs> it's all over for you, sunshine. Kaine! Kaine! <laughs> <laughs> 
Transform again. We'll just stop it again. As many times as it takes. I don't care how tough it is. We're gonna get you back. I like sleeping outside because I'm with you, Kaine. I'm able to ignore my appearance and keep going because of you. I'm weak and I'm sad and I'm lonely, but you make me strong. You're my friend and I need you. So don't you dare leave me. <laughs> To be fair, that kid's been through a lot. Stop crying. And thanks. I'm all right. Over there. And what is this, hmm? It's me. It's got some kind of writing on it, but... I don't know what it says. How remarkably useless of you. Well, let's go ask Popola. Thanks, Vice. It's a cipher of some kind. Can you determine its meaning? I think this is the key to unlocking the Shadow Lord's castle. Here, take a look at this. I wrote down all the words I can understand. This fragment is called the Stone Guardian. Given that you found it in the Lost Shrine, the words must mean something. There are spaces here for four other fragments as well. Sacrifice, the Law of Robotics, the Memory Tree, Loyal Cerberus. The Law of Robotics probably refers to the Junk Heap. And the memory tree might be the forest of myth. But as for sacrifice and loyal Cerberus, I don't have a clue. Not a problem. Hmm? If we want to fill in the words, we just run around the world killing every big monster we find, right? Oh, splendid. By all means, let us undertake a murderous rampage. They're just shades. Besides... It's the only way to reach the Shadow Lord. It's a dangerous task. Yeah, well, Yona's in even more danger. But how can you even be sure that she's... Because she is! Right? Uh. Hmm. The Junk Heap and the Forest of Myth, yeah? I'm on my way. 
Please be careful. Oh, and listen. About Kaine and Emil. The villagers know how much they've sacrificed, and they're thankful. It's just... They're scared, you know? People can't change overnight. I'll hurry them along the best I can. But can you please give them a little more time? I'll try. Popola said we might be able to find a key fragment in the junk heap. Perhaps we can find a clue at Two Brothers Weaponry. Hoping a big egg would spawn. We'll check one more time and then we'll head to the junk heap. One sec.
go. Get him. Don't let him escape. Military Defense Robot, Key 33. You are an intruder. You must be eliminated. Error. There is something leaking from your eyes. Defense robot P-33 will protect you. P-33 is charged with defending others. P-33 will defend Khalil. be tons of machinery here. Yeah, but I don't know how much we can actually use. Oh, wow. Check this out. It looks brand new. Hey, be careful, all right? This place is dangerous. Uh, I'll be fine. Oh, no. Huh? Look out! Huh? 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 Jacob? Oh, God. This can't... 
can't be happening. Jacob! Jacob! No! The noise of the intruders caused the structure to fail. They should have proceeded with more caution. One intruder has perished. The Junkie. Perhaps we should speak to the brothers. They might know something about this. Oh, hey there. It's been a while. You're the little one, aren't you? You've grown up. Alfair's your brother. My brother's been dead for four years. Oh, I see. Please, forgive the question. It's okay. I need to ask you something. What is it? You heard any rumors about shades around here? Not the little ones. I'm looking for one that's unusually big and powerful. No, I haven't heard about anything like that, but I haven't really been listening. All I want is to destroy robots. Just rip them up. Uh, okay. Never mind then. See you later. Wait! Yes? I recently got my hands on a weapon. A very powerful weapon. I thought you might get some use out of it. Don't we already have this weapon? Shh. These things happen the second time around. Hmm. This sword has seen better days. Yeah, it's pretty beat up. I mean, there's potential, but it's fairly powerless right now. Can you repair it? I can repair anything with the proper materials. If you'll fix it, I'll get the parts. <laughs> I'm so glad I decided not to throw this out. I'm gonna need some memory alloy. Only the real big enemies on the second basement level have them, so watch yourself. Also, here's the passcode to get down there. Use it on the elevator. You got it. It's a shame about the older lad. He was but a child. Sounds like you went into a dangerous area for the sake of the business.
elder brother postponed his joy for the sake of his sibling. Do you think he was ever truly happy? Just making his little brother happy would have been enough. That's what being an older brother is like.
Seagoing vessel that carries freight and passengers over bodies of water. You have taught me much, Khalil. You have helped to expand my vocabulary. You have instructed me in the ways of the outside world. Don't tell me every boss I killed had a wholesome backstory. Pretty impressive stuff you found. I'll start upgrading your weapon right away. And since you did me a favor, I won't even charge you for it. Well, actually, this is gonna take a little more time than I thought. No sense in you waiting around. I'll send you a letter once it's ready. That would be great. Appears we have some free time on our hands. Popola said we might be able to find something in the Forest of Myth. You will forgive me if I seem less than enthusiastic about such a trick.
of that blasted dream. Yeah. Truly a nightmare I hope never to experience again. I hear you. Wrong button.
Sorry guys, just need another second. I'm sorry guys, I need another few minutes. I have to go check on the delivery. One second.
you guys are going to get started back here in a second. strange presence whenever I visit the Divine Tree. The Divine Tree? It's a legendary tree that exists in the heart of our village. Did you investigate the cause of this presence? Not really, no. And why not? Well, you're not really supposed to go near the tree, except for prayer. And why is that? I don't know. It's just how things have always been. Weird. seem to encounter nothing but odd people lately. You should talk, Vice. <laughs> As if Grimoire Vice is capable of spouting such nonsense. Hang on. I don't think it's done. Is the dark entity that governs all memories. May the words form themselves to your liking. Does that mean it'll tell us what we want to know? That'd be nice. Black, pure darkness, painted over everything. Words scattered here and there across the blackness. Kind words, difficult words, amorous words, all sparkling in the dark like jewels. The words were few now, but time was shorter. Grabbing the words in desperation, the tree turned to the sky. This is wrong, whispered the tree in the voice of wind through the leaves. This is not how it was supposed to be. The plan has failed. Once long ago, the tree had remembered everything about the world. This was, its, this was its task, its function, its purpose. It shivered with something approaching joy as it collected the memories of mankind. This was no accident. Emotions were as such much a part of the tree as a root and bark. Memories collected like dew on the thick green leaves of the tree. And once they had formed a web that spanned the entire world, words collapsed in the sunlight before passing through the leaves into the pool of memory. From the pool, the words joined together to form colonies. The colonies united into whirlpools of light, and the light coalesced into the stars. Each star was like a child of the tree, and it loved them all. Look at my memory. A child is here, brought low by disease. He is far too young to have suffered so. Thin beyond words, the boy's skin is a shade paler than the bleached sheets upon which he lies. His parents no longer visit him, for they cannot bear to watch him suffer. The doctors have long since surrendered his fate to the gods. The boy, too, has abandoned hope. Strange emotions, weariness, hatred, swell within the dark recesses of his young heart. He tries to reject the black terror that germinates in his body, but no amount of effort or tears can drive the invader away. He has long ceased to resent his parents and doctors. Once he did, but now his pain is so great, there's little room in his heart to think of others. Only one person brings the boy comfort, the healthy young girl of tanned skin and deep brown eyes. She's a beacon of brightness and light in the boy's world. Her very presence is a comfort to him. But he is unable to look upon her face. Whenever they meet, the boy is filled with loathing for his own state. Soon this loathing eats away what joy he receives from the girl's visits. The girls stop coming, he knows this, as every waking moment is spent in fear of this day. He thinks if he could talk to her, if he could tell her of his feelings, this might be not be so. This might not be so. But this conversation never happens. The girl disappears. The boy dies alone. The tree scoops up this memory and carefully stores it within itself. Etched upon it is a single word, envy. Look at my memory. There is a female warrior. Her greatest enemy is a beast of red eyes that she cannot fully comprehend. 
When she strikes it with her sword, it turns into a pillar of salt and dies. But when the white smoke clears, a new enemy rises. And another. And another. The warrior knows her struggle is folly, but fighting the unending stream of enemies fills her with a sense of joy and purpose. Somewhere deep in the warrior's drug addled mind lies a vague memory of a daughter. The child exists only in her head, the dying remnants of a powerful dream. She doesn't know. Her friends and fellow warriors come and go. Some flee in terror, some are eaten. Hello, Watcher. Hope you're doing well. She began the fight with 33 companions, but most are gone now. The warrior's body shudders. She does not understand why at first. By the time she hears the fierce low sound, the arena is already closed in darkness. Looking up, the warrior sees a beast so large that it blots out the sky. She is laughing. She has been doing so for as long as she can remember. Covered in blood and dirt, the warrior laughs. She laughs and laughs until the town that contains her daughter collapses into a pile of dust. This memory has been stored for a long time. It is etched with a single word, loss. Look at my memory. A red dragon falls from the heavens. Ah, that memory has been lost. A shame. It was a favorite of mine. After many centuries of existence, the tree saw its carefully labeled memories were beginning to dwindle. Once seemingly infinite, the memories now seemed ready to disappear forever. The tree did not feel sadness at this. Grief was an emotion beyond its comprehension. It did, however, have the distinct feeling that something was missing. The mountain of memories it had so carefully assembled had disappeared. The tree stretched its branches as far as it could, but new memories refused to flow. The pool of memories was a black, empty pit, a hollow place where life had once flourished. The tree had lost its purpose. There was nothing to be done but sift through the few remaining memories, littering the ground under its branches. This is why the tree was pleased when the young man and his companion entered the room. Embers. Well, this place is gloomy as hell. The room embers had entered was completely empty. Almost completely empty. All I could see were a few crystals scattered haphazardly on the ground. Picking up one of the crystals and peering into it, Ember suddenly saw a familiar sight. It was the forest of myth, its villagers, prisoners of their own dreams. I apologize, the tree thought, but it's all that remains. As Ember stared at the jewel, bewildered, a voice suddenly called out from the depths of his mind. The voice implored them to listen. It was an order. Following it was mandatory. Abruptly, the pair realized that they must listen. They must listen. Good more advice. Look there! A small shadowy presence appeared from beneath the floor. It appeared to be a shade. The shade grasped several jewels in its hand. More jewels tumbled out of its mouth like shards of broken teeth, sights and sounds tinkling from each one before vanishing forever. <clears throat> forever. The creature was abusing the memories, treating the precious objects like a collection of cheap playroom toys. Vice. The shade appeared to be consuming the memories. These things eat memories? The tree extended a branch toward embers. Without a second thought, Ember brought his blade down on the shade and tearing its stomach wide. Jewels burst from the shade and poured across the chamber floor. Look, thought the tree, there is the conviction memory I had lost, and satisfaction, and many others as well. Yes, this is good. The tree opened its mouth and attempted to speak, but no sound emerged. A millennium of silence and solitude had caused the tree to forget certain things, but rather than be upset, it greeted the development of good cheer. Focusing all its power on the riddle of the speech, the tree formed a kind of makeshift vocal cord and tried again. <clears throat> I implore, Hack! It spat out a glimmering green jewel. Hmm, one more time. I implore you. There we are. There we are, yeah. What was the color of the lost envy? No. It spoke. She has intelligence and emotion. Who cares? Ember's brushed twice as common aside as a sword slice of the shade's right arm. The shade extended its streaming arm to embers. I must touch him. I must make contact. The moment its fingers brushed against embers, the tree felt a warm sensation and began to burn. Something hot crushed its fingers up its arm and out to its entire body. It was emotion. More than the enemy had felt in centuries. The tree cried out in surprise and joy. One. One thousand years alone. One thousand years in quiet contemplation. The tree felt it like it was going to break apart. For long centuries, the tree had been alone, its heart sealed with heavy chains, but no more. New, powerful emotions began to take hold, causing its heart to lighten. This was more than simple emotions that had been designed to feel. It was the beginning of, beginnings of a soul. The young man was the key. This was the promise made long ago. This was how it, should be, how it would be released. The tree's stomach began to throb in pain, a new and unpleasant sensation. But the time was not yet right. I implore you, how many were lost by the warrior who fought the red-eyed beasts? 
Okay, riddle time is over. I'm gonna kill this stupid shade once and for all. Something round and shiny fell from the open stomach and clattered to the floor. The key, cried the book. Secure the key. The band's sword slowed. Time began to delay, dilate around them, stretching and slowing. Time is essential. The next word must be heard. The words exploded. It became difficult to discern their meaning. The pool of memories began to crack as infinite blackness burned its way into the wall. Vice is filled is falling apart. Numbers. How can a world of letters? I implore, most important thing. World. The light was complete. The memories disappeared. The tree's identity began to dissolve. As the letter slowly faded, Embers was drawn back to the real world, and the tree was satisfied. What in the... I never realized shades were capable of rational thought. I don't care if they can tap dance and play the fiddle. I just want to kill him without all this hassle. With the tree defeated, we no longer have to worry about being buried in its world of letters. Unless, of course, time itself begins to rewind. has found some information about the Shadow Lord. Let's drop by the village. Very well. have a letter it would seem. Dear Embers, this is inform you that the upgrade work on your weapon has been completed. The weapon is ready and available for pickup at your earliest convenience. I also have a more personal request to make of you, once, one I hope we can discuss further once you arrive to pick up the weapon. Here's two brothers' weaponry. Personal request, hmm? He's done a lot for us. We should see what he wants. Off to the junk heap then.
Hey there. Your weapon is ready to go. Great. Thanks. You know, with a... You were going to say? I need to ask you for a favor. Oh, yeah? I want you to avenge my brother. That is a rather ponderous favor. It's my mission. It's the whole reason I've been creating these weapons for the past four years. I don't care about money. I only care about making a weapon strong enough to kill those bastards. Which bastards? The ones in the mountain. That little Shade and his robot. The Shade has joined forces with a robot? There's a Shade in there? Yes. <sighs> and what have we decided, hmm? We're gonna kill it.
shade living with a machine. What's that about? Don't know, don't care. All that matters is that we kill them both. Seems we have found the entrance to our robot friend's hideout. Right. Let's head down. Are you mad? We've no idea what lies below. Beat's going the long way around. Come on. Somehow. Aim for the legs. Knock it down. Take out the shade. Transform. Watch for falling debris. Look out. Escape. Escape. 
Escape. Escape. Help. See the world. Burn. 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 Must protect. Must fight. Where do you think you're going? Stupid machine! You killed my family! You took everything from me! Why did you have to be here? Why you? Why? <laughs> Beautiful. What a perfect example of humanity. Hey, come on. That's enough. <laughs> I did it! Now that this goddamn thing is dead, I can forage wherever I want! Just wait, you goddamn freak! Now I can make all kinds of powerful weapons! Just leave it to me! Leave it all to me! <laughs> Look, we get it, okay? Really? Hatred and madness will never heal a wounded heart. Maybe it's just all he's capable of right now. Revenge is a fool's errand. Yeah, I know.
Maybe Popol has found some information about the Shadow Lord. Let's drop by the village. Very well. You know, I've been thinking. Why was a shade hanging out with the machine? It appeared the creature was actually issuing orders to that mechanical minion. Do you think the shade had a reason for what it did? Actually. <sighs> Look, it doesn't matter what a shade is or isn't thinking. All that matters is that we kill every last one of them. Right. Sure. The idea of a shade trying to protect a robot is goddamn absurd. Still, you guys should be careful. What do you mean? If the shade inside me ever takes over, I'm probably going to attack you. It's not gonna happen. You are no shade. The lad is correct. You are many things, hussy. But a shade is not one of them. <laughs> hussy. Shades, for example, do not come equipped with such foul and scurrilous mouths. How about I cram your face up your own asshole, book? Don't worry, Kaine. If your shade ever takes over, I'll stop you. You will, will you? <sighs> Thanks, Emil.
Learned anything new about the Shadow Lord's key, Popola? You know, I was just going to talk to you about that. You remember the Airy, right? That depressing shell of a village? Not so much anymore, it sounds like. I just got this letter from the village chief. Have a look. From the office of the chief of the Eyrie, to Popola. My greetings to you and your village. Hope everything is going well. Our village has shut itself away from the world for far too many years, and we have therefore decided it is time to change our ways. As part of this endeavor, we have resolved to establish a shop within the village. It is now open for business, and I look forward to seeing a great many customers visit from all over the world. With regards to the sacrifice keyword you wrote about, one of our villagers claimed to know the meaning behind the term. You're more than welcome to speak with him on the matter as part of your visit to Airy. I hope to hear from you again soon. Sacrifice? Isn't that the name of one of the key fragments? That's right. I've been trading notes with leaders from every town in the land. You're amazing, Popola. Hmm. This entire affair strikes me as a bit too convenient. I'm afraid Grimoire Vice is correct. What do you mean? <sighs> the Airy has been shut off from the world for years. And now they've not only opened trade routes, but they freely exchange information about the Shadow Lord. I agree. It seems rather unnatural, and dangerous. You're overthinking it. Besides, I don't care if it's dangerous. I won't get Yona back by just sitting around and waiting. If there are shades there, I'll just kill them and be done with it. Oh dear. Well, if that's the way you feel, I guess I won't stop you. Try speaking with the Chief when you get there. Let's go see the chief. It was a soul-crushing place. I hope you find your Yona. I really do. Thank you. I cannot fathom that village setting up a mercantile. They must have truly opened their minds. Yeah, I have my doubts. Aren't you glad to be going back home, Kaine? Home? The place is a shithole. Ooh, the village. It's home to so many terrible little memories. Isn't it, Kaine? <laughs> Shut up, shut up, shut up! We do not desire. We do not desire needless conflict. If we can continue to live with humans, then we can continue to live peacefully. But that young man will come. Yes, the young man will come. He will kill us all. Women and children included. What should we do? What can we do? Okay. 
Okay, that was new dialogue. Uh, hello? We're here from Popola's village. It's all over. We came to ask about the letter you sent. Our days are numbered. Our village is doomed. As cheerful as ever, it seems. You're the one who wrote the letter, right? I... I don't know about any letter. What the hell is going on here? It may be faster for us to take our inquiries elsewhere. Let us ask around. Someone must know something. attacked again last night. It's over. For us. And for you. I don't believe in anything anymore. One more. 
perish. Everyone. I'm too scared to trust anyone. You. I know you. Welcome. We've got some new items in stock today. Come back soon, all right? Make sure you stock up on necessities before heading out to hunt. Come back any time. My weapons may not be the late. Thanks. Why not fill your garden with flowers? I hope you grow some real buttes. I think I heard something about that. So, you know about the letter? Hmm, maybe I don't. I'm not sure. Ah, which is it, man? Oh, uh, and if I may ask, are you friends of Kaine? You could say that. Ah, I've heard the rumors. Here to hunt shades, are you? Indeed. Our aim is to defeat every last one. Every? Every last one? Everyone? 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 Vice! Beware, this man is a shame. Damn it! It's a trap! I figured as much. They've been possessed somehow. 
keep your guard up. Others. You guys sure are taking your goddamn time. A thousand apologies. We were distracted by the local welcoming party. Want some help? A carnival of murder. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> The villagers are possessed! But not all of them. Some are still human, so be careful! by this lady. She's a shade. People are behaving as if we are the villains. Kaine! Kill them! Kill them now! Villagers are under attack over there. was fine until you showed up.
ashes. Is this beast a shade as well? That thing sucked up the villagers. No! If we keep this up, we're gonna kill them all! We can't let that happen! It will take more than a barrage of magic to stop us. The first to waver is the first to die. I sense magic coming from the center of that eye. Center. Defeating the smaller enemies has no effect on the leader. Located around the back. Try attacking it from above. I'll try to pin it down. Emil! Emil! Uh, uh, I'll keep it busy. You should be able to attack from behind. Go around and get it. Please, hurry! Emil can handle this. We must circle behind the creature at once. Get in the eye. you here. Damn it! You beat the hell out of that thing! 
How can it still move? Its combined powers are beyond even my greatest suspicion. Emil, Emil, wait! Emil, he's gone. His instincts have taken hold. The ultimate weapon is being deployed. Ah, oh, fuck! This ain't good, sunshine. Uncontrollable magic. I have to protect the people I love. That was my only thought as I unleashed a magic power enough, powerful enough to destroy not only the shade, but everyone else as well. All of them. So many innocent lives. Destroy. Eviscerate. Crush. Kill. These are the dark impulses that overwrite all other things. As a being that was created to be a magical weapon, these are my instincts. Or maybe it's better to call them our instincts. The clocks and the sounds from deep within the bowels of the laboratory. The thick metal shutters drop down, sealing off the room with a series of dull metal thuds. Abort the experiment. Number six, have control. Everyone out now. Out of here. Now. Get out of here. The researcher's words are abruptly cut off as massive hand materializes out of the gloom, lifts him high into the air. The researcher begins to scream. He screams and screams. The sound echoing off the walls of the laboratory until the hand squeezes down, coating the room in a deep crimson hue. The rest of his colleagues stand in silence, mouths open, unable to process what they have just seen. And a female scientist takes a step back and lets fly off a heartbreaking wail. This is a terrible mistake for the sound of her cry to suddenly brings forth a monster in all of its terrible glory. Its body is a bloated corpse, its head a grinning skull. It's massive, many times the size of a human. The head lulls from side to side as it tromps about the room on all fours, bringing to mind the bottom maneuverings of some wretched starving beast. This creature, this thing, is experimental weapon number six. Also known as Hollywood. No, oh no, please stop! Oh God, save me, save me! I don't want to die! One by one, the maddened cries of the researchers are silenced. If number six understands their petitions, it pays them no heed. Instead of continuing its rampage of destruction and slaughter, if a focus supporters on opposition. After an eternity, the screaming stops. The alarms fall silent, and only then does the creature make a sound howling out from the fathomable roar that goes up and down the empty halls of the blood-soaked laboratory. It's a sound that curses those who dared bring back, bring such evil into the world. And yet one that also seems to be pleading for help.
Two sets of footsteps echo in an otherwise silent corridor in the first level of the laboratory. One set belongs to a young boy, his eyes blindfolded and his hands restrained. The other belongs to a severe man in a white, long white coat. The man drags the boy along by means of a long chain attached to a set of shackles on his wrists. Rubble scattered here and there across the floor of the corridor, making the journey an exceedingly difficult one for the boy who cannot see. Mm, excuse me. Could you please walk a bit slower, sir? I'm not used to being blindfolded, and rather than stopping, the man only increases his pace, causing the boy to stumble in an attempt to keep up. How rude. This last humiliation proves too much, and the boy finds himself unable to reverse his fall. Without the ability to brace himself, he topples to the floor, smashing his head on a pile of debris and causing a trickle of blood to warm its way down his pale, frightened face. Agonized by the pain, the boy inadvertently opens his eyes, causing the falling drops of blood to emit a strange, crackling sound before transforming into tiny white rocks. Close your damn eyes, roars the man. Yes, sir, stammers the boy as he slams his lids shut. He hadn't realized the blood pulled had slipped off during the fall, but now he keeps his eyes squeezed shut so tightly that it spark sparkles appear against the black of his vision. The boy is a meal. Also known as number seven. He's a magical weapon whose eyes are capable of turning to stone anything that falls under their gaze. Don't look at me, barks the man. Never look at me. I will look at you if you're going to be a rude mouth. Ah. Yeah, I'd have looked at him. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I'm looking at the ground now. So if you just hand me the butt and stay waiting for him to finish, the man extends one foot and presses Emil's face to the floor with a heavy black boot. Aw, oh, hell no. Look at him, Emil. S sir, stop. You're hurting me. I told you to keep your eyes and your mouth shut, so do it. The man knows this boy. This weapon could wipe him out with a single glance. Yet subduing him in this way gives him a sense of relief. After making certain the boy is sufficiently cowed, the man leans down, retrieves a blindfold, and knots it tightly around the boy's quivering head. Right then, on your feet, let's move. Alright, that guy needs to be turned to stone. Emil staggers to his feet, trying to ignore the red liquid oozing down his face. The blood doesn't matter. The pain doesn't matter. All that matters is finishing the job they had set out for him to do. The second level of the lab is even worse shaped than the first. The environs are littered with rubble and rock, making the thought of a decent foothold laughable. When the man's eyes linger on a second rubble stained a deep red, he has a sudden image of warm, gooey brownies slathered in a strawberry sauce. Eh. His stomach lurches at the thought, but then he attempts to over his eyes and land on the remains of a human being, rendered or can only be described as paste. The man blinks, his mind goes strangely blank before attempting to determine exactly how many humans had to be sacrificed to create the scattered piles of flesh around him. After a moment, his thoughts simply cease altogether, as if his mind realizes that trying to put such a thing into form is folly. You can go the rest of the way on your own, says the man in a voice much weaker than he wishes, to be, wishes it to be. Oh, you coward. Abusing a little kid and then running away. I mean, what does it matter? You're not even human, you're a monster. With this, the man spins around and dashes back down the hall. The helpless Emil simply listens as the footsteps of his erstwhile captor fade into the distance. Emil finds himself alone in a room stench of death and blood. For a moment, he considers opening his eyes, but thought of the oars await him, quickly squash his plan. Instead, he stands still and listens in intently. Eventually, a far-off sound reaches his ears. That's the howl I heard before. Emil resumes walking, using the sound of a distant voice to guide him, almost as if it was calling him home. By the time Emil reaches the third level, he's moving on memory as much as sound. His hands are placed recovered in fresh wounds from numerous falls, but every time he thinks about giving up, his mind returns to his sister. We studied together. We ate cookies together. We cried together. We laughed together. And sometimes I was the only one who got yelled at. That's why I was never lonely. Our being together allowed me to stay strong. For Emil, his sister was all he had to live for. So holding that feeling close to his chest, he preserved... No, sorry. He presses on one so step after the other. Finally, Emil finds himself drawn close to a certain experimental chamber in the deepest part of the lab. The howl is very close now. As he touches the switch and controls the door, he thinks about his mission. Number six is the ultimate weapon. She is his sister, and he must turn her to stone. The door slowly opens, revealing the massive interior of the experimentation chamber. After a few steps, Emil removes his blindfold and slowly opens his eyes. His sister looks before him, but she looks nothing like the girl he wants to do. Instead, he sees a savage beast crawling all fours through the shredded remains of researchers. As the thing had been his sister stops and tilts his head in Emil's direction, he focuses his gaze on it. A series of soft, crunching sounds emerge from the creature as his magic does his terrible work. First the fingers, then the hands, arms, legs, head. What little color the beast once possessed fades to a dull ashen gray. And yet somehow it summons with strength and remains and pulls itself toward Emil, one slow, lumbering effort at a time. 
wailing, the massive monstrosity closes in. Is she worried about me? Or is she coming to kill me? Emil feels prepared to accept either outcome. After all, this was his older sister, the person he loved more than anyone else in the world. Halua, I... The moment Emil speaks, number six comes to a sudden halt. Silence descends on the chamber as the siblings stare at each other. I'm sorry, Halua. Halua, but everyone says you're too powerful. This is too dangerous unless I steal you away. I'm so sorry. As Emil watches her body begin to turn to stone once more, number six simply waits in utter perfect silence. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. moment number six's petrification is complete. Her memories fled into Mille's mind. The two of them building, huddling together in the cold, all alone in the world with no one to protect them. All she wanted was to save her little brother. And yet, it was that little brother who, in a sense, saved her. The moment the petrification is complete, Mille sinks to his knees. The frozen sister and little brother were racked with sin. Alone in this cold cage, the two of them would weep in a single silent voice. It was our combined power that destroyed the eerie. Whole existences, entire lives, even the memories. We took it all. We took everything. My sweet, gentle sister turned into a monster. And the same thing will happen to me now that I have her power. My instincts as a weapon went out and destroyed me in the process. If that power ends up hurting someone I love, I... We'd best be off. Yeah. Popol has found some information about the Shadow Lord. Let's drop by the village. Very well.
All right, guys, we're going to call it quits for now for on uh, Replicant. Going to look into some other games. Uh, probably going to do some Phasma in a little few hours. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we're going to continue this probably a little bit later tonight or tomorrow. And we'll take it from there. Again, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. And take care of yourselves. Aloha. And until next time, be well.